Hi guys, this is Pick10 and welcome to your 10th Roblox Lost Scripting tutorial. Now in this tutorial we are doing custom functions. Now this tutorial you may not find as interesting as the rest because what we're doing won't be achieving a whole lot of stuff. We'll just be teaching you how to um, create, call and use custom functions. But these custom functions are incredibly useful for doing all kinds of stuff. Um, the first thing we need to do in our place, I've created a new place. I'm not using the same place as we've been using for most of the tutorials. I created a new place in my last ones now, in case you didn't notice. I, I've saved it as Tut Tem. Now, as you may be noticing, my Roblox is lagging slightly at the moment, which is why I haven't been able to mark any tests in my Roblox of a scripting group, haven't been able to play many games for ages. Um, um, I think with Roblox is all of these updates that they're bringing in. Look at the output for how, how many scripts I have to load before it's even started. I think Roblox is lagging itself up with all of these updates. Now it's not a bad thing, the updates are really cool, but I can't play Roblox until I get a better computer than this laptop. So if you are in my Roblox Live Scripting group, then be patient because I won't be able to mark any tests for now. I'll still send you the tests though, but I'll just ignore any replies I get, so don't bother. Now, custom functions, you've probably seen them before. You c To declare a custom function, well, I don't know why I keep calling them custom functions. They are custom, but they're basically just functions. Non-custom functions would basically be the Roblox built-in functions. Like, we've, we've had a tutorial on this already, like remove or clone or something like that. Anyway, to, um, get a country, um, to create a custom function, you, the first thing you type is function. What a surprise. Then you need to name the function. The name can be anything you like as long as it's not the name of exactly another function that's already built in. So if you want to call a function color3.new, that will override the color3.new function that there is already. So you shouldn't do that, but it, you won't be able to do it by accident only if you purposely do it, which you can do. Um, I'll show you, maybe show you the benefits of overriding functions later, but that would be coming a much, much later tutorial. But to stick to this tutorial, we'll just name it anything we want. So I'm just going to name it pig. Now, inside the function, we usually tab because because it's a keyword and we have it's the start of a block. Um, you can tell by it has this minus and plus sign. When you click it, it disappears. That means you need an end in a bit. So I'm just going to stick the end in now so I don't forget because I've forgotten before. It's not very nice because it gives you a complicated error message that beginners usually can't understand. In this function pig, we can just type something to run whenever we want it to. So say, we, say print hi. Now, this function, it will declare a block of clo code, not clode, um, We'd ask the name of script functions. If we press play now, oh sorry, I think I've forgotten to zoom in. Here we go. This is what it should look like at the moment. Remember, we need to use these um, two brackets to the or parentheses or whatever you call them in other places. I just call them brackets. You use these um, to declare a function. They are needed. They are used. Sorry, they're needed now, but they are used for arguments which I'll get into later. Maybe this toy, maybe the next one, but I don't know. This is, how, this is what it should look like at the moment. You can change anything you want. You can change the function name. This can be whatever you want. This can be whatever you want. If we press play now though, I'm not sure you can see the output with this, but it says running script functions, but there's nothing else after it. It doesn't print hi. This is because this, all this does is declare a block of code. It doesn't run the code. This is the advantage of functions. It doesn't it doesn't run the code straight away. So if we wanted to say um, pig, then if we that's how you call a function. So to call a function, all you need to do is type the name with surrounded by two brackets. Um, so if we name this function, whoops, name the function that, then we need to say this. And that's a really stupid name for function, but I don't care. If we press play now, because we've run the function, it does say hi afterwards. So hopefully you've understood this. The function declares a block of code. Whenever you call the function, 
it runs the code and size function. So if we wanted print, print, lol, then after this, we could just put print that. I'm just typing random stuff here. Print that. And what do you think would happen here? It's going to run through all this code. And it's going to come to here. And it's going to write print this. So it's going to print SDF. Then when we get to here, it's going to write, right, we need to run our graph or whatever it's called. And then it will go back. It will go up straight up to here. And in these, it will run the thing size. And then it will print high. And then it will print low. And it will go right back. And then it will go right, finish this. So now we're going to run this, and then I'll print that. Let's see what happens. Press play. Hopefully you can see it. You probably might be able to see it prints SDF, then high, then low, then just... And that's exactly the right order we wanted it to. Now you may be wondering, what's the actual point of these? What's, what, what advantage does it give you? Well, let me show you. If, say, we, if we wanted to... Actually, first I'm going to need a brick. So apparently inserting bricks into my place lags a bit now. Every time, even if I close a window, the entire thing lags. It does this even when I'm not running a screen recording software. There we go. I don't want to rename workspace. Um, let's wait till it actually inserts apart. It shouldn't take this long. Please tell me if you get this problem as well. Apparently, my computer has a hard drive error. I'm just going to hit P so I don't have to type loads. Say in this function, I wanted to change the transparency. So workspace dot p dot transparency equals 0 0.5 so and then I would wait one workspace dot p dot transparency oops can't spell today transparency 0 0.5 then equals 1 sorry no equals 0 here we go then whenever we call this function, it would run this code. What does this code do? Changes P transparency to 0 0.5, you should already know this, and then waits a second, and then changes it back to 0 again. So then, I'm just going to name the function that thing. Um, fade in out, let's name it that. And then if I use fade in out, and I press... Um, transparency, I spelt it wrong, of course I did, I always spell things wrong, transparency, oh I forgot to anchor the brick as well, that would be helpful, where is it, um, oh it's lagging even when I move the camera now, right so if I press play now, hopefully you'll be able to see this, Brick transparent front and it comes back again. Good. So, say in our code we wanted to do this several times. So, instead of having to type out this this several times, all we need to do this is fading out. So, say, to go. This will be useful in loads of games. So we could do if the player wins, then run function player has won, and the function player had won would do all the stuff like. Award him points, give him a badge, teleport him to the winner section, I don't know. But if, and then we do else player has lost, and then in the player has lost function we'll kill him, and then we'll deduct points, and we'll give him a badge that says you're rubbish. But for now we'll stick with this, so if we wanted to do, if we wanted to keep doing this, then we could just fade it out, fade it out, or even better, we could use a loop, so we could use well wait one do hopefully you should know what this does every one second it will do this we'll do that so it will run this function every one second so and this will go on forever we'll go in fade back in again fade out fade in hooray it's working so that's your basic introduction to functions this is basically what all functions do you can't do a whole lot more with them they're the only things you can do with else of them you can use events with them which you're going to later we can do you can use them to return values which is really useful which we'll go into in a later tutorial as well 
but in this tutorial we're going to be going into function arguments as well so uh, some people call them parameters they're arguments parameters whatever you want to call them say we wanted to if we wanted to use this fading out function on multiple bricks so if we wanted to use I'll keep the code there if we wanted to use this fading out function say on some different bricks so so we had 10 different bricks in my place and sometimes wanted to do it on brick 1 sometimes wanted to use this function on brick 2 sometimes wanted to use this function on brick 10 then we couldn't do it because this function always turns workspace.p so what we can do is put an argument in this function now Ed, this is one of the main main programming techniques that you'll need if you're going to program anything anywhere is functions, arguments and all this stuff so this is the first thing we're going to say type brick name here now function arguments are usually quite un hard to understand from a beginner that doesn't have much of an intuition for it if you do have an intuition fine you can understand it perfectly if you don't then this might be quite difficult so brick name will now be our brick it can this one be called anything in in here you don't have to know what's going on yet so we'll, you can, this can be anything that has to be called brick name it's called, you, can, you can call that so let's let's just use it brick I'm gonna call it brick for simplicity's sake no I'll type brick dot transparency because I put five brick dot transparency because it isn't five and then what do you think will happen if I run the function no you tell me what happens now if I press play workspace dot functions to attempt to index local brick and nil value so it's telling us in workspace dot functions which is a script to line two And then it says attempt to index local brick. So that means we're attempting to use this variable called brick, which is, as it says there, a nil value. Now what a nil value means is basically it hasn't been initialized, it doesn't exist yet. Because we haven't where in a script does it tell where in a script does it tell anything what brick is? It doesn't, does it? So what we have to do is actually tell tell the script what this brick is and to do that because this is in the brackets of fading out when we call fading out we can just tell it what brick is here so if then we type workspace dot p anytime this function runs brick is what's in this argument here so hopefully you'll understand this fading out because we t because we used workspace.p here that will also be workspace.p and because we use brick there so will this be also workspace.p work so basically this is the same sort of as then taking that away and saying brick brick equals workspace.p p now what this this is basically the same thing as what I just typed, except we can't change it whenever we run the function. So if I just undo that. So hopefully I'll just go through this again. Workspace.p is brick because it's a it's in the parameters or arguments. So brick is there. So that's workspace.p. So then we can just change this. So if we had another brick, we could go as workspace dot the other brick if the other brick was called the other brick and then then brick would become brick we can use it more than once of course so if we do let's just insert another brick into this place hopefully I'm not going to run out of time I don't actually know how long these videos are so it's quite annoying so, so this brick this is called I'm going, I'm going to name this I because I can't even bother type any longer than that. So then if I use this on workspace to I and then I use this function on workspace dot P 
Now, now we're passing workspace.i as the argument. So workspace.i, brick will be workspace.i. So that will workspace.i dot transparency, workspace.i dot transparency. And here we run it again, but with workspace.p. So this will be workspace.p dot transparency. And then, then, then again, the workspace.p and workspace.p. So if I ran now, what do you think would happen? One of them would fall to its death. Because I forgot to anchor it. That's going to turn transparent, and that's going to turn transparent. Hooray, we've used functions. Now, why would this be useful in a, for a start? If you want to use this function, it would be really useful for just turning transparent and off transparent without having to type all that again with each different thing. So we could just type this. But also, say if we wanted a... Uh, a uh, on minigame scripts, for example, if we wanted to make a per... Say, in lots of minigames, there's one person who's the guy controlling the crane to pick everyone up or something. We'd, pass, we'd call the function called teleport person to pr crane. And then in the argument, we'd use person. So the, so the person in the argument would be <coughs> the person that the function runs on. Now, you may have not understood that. But later on, you will when we use we go to actually create a game. And that's, the, that's sort of the end result of all of these tutorials. Until I go into the advanced ones, the end result will be we're going to make a mini game. Game. So hopefully you've understood all this. Um, you might have not seen how it's useful, but hopefully you know how it works. In the next tutorial, we'll be going into the function returns, because that's also one of the hardest things that beginners take to understand. I had to work it out myself, because I couldn't find anywhere that explained it. So, that's all for now. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.